Some of you are tied to common thinking about tech and don't question things, but that's okay. I'll do the questioning for you and share my learned knowledge with you. The common thinking I will focus on today is the use of an antivirus. Some of you will find it strange that I don't use an antivirus and I will tell you that everything is fine on my end. I made a popular video many years ago about the antivirus lie, but this video will focus on a different aspect of that. I continue not to use an antivirus, but recent developments have put the fear in me about what the antivirus can do, and that is for it to act as a man in the middle. So I'm even more concerned than ever. Now, if you're in a corporate environment, your IT department will require you to use an antivirus. I understand why they would want that, but it's not for your privacy or safety, it's for the corporation. They will do what they will do and you will have to conform. In the meantime, I will tell you why you should not use an antivirus on your personal devices. Before I was using the default Windows Defender on Windows, if you have Windows, but even that is suspicious to me now. Nothing changes though, hackers continue to attack and the risk of malware does not change. So what do you do instead? Well, we'll analyze that because with sensible approaches and knowledge of how attacks work, you will find that you don't need anything special. This has been a big marketing push from antivirus makers and even John McAfee, the creator of McAfee Antivirus, said when he was alive that you should delete your antivirus. Stay right there to learn about an uncommon message to dump your antivirus. If you watch my recent videos on governments wanting to bypass end-to-end -end encryption, you may know a little bit about what I will say about the antivirus. But I also made a video on this topic a while back and it needs some dusting off the cobwebs. My reasoning back then was based on different expectations of threats and times have changed so I will reassess this again. What triggered me to make this video was that someone asked me in the comments about why I don't use an antivirus and what happens with the malware you encounter. So to that gentleman, you will get a comprehensive answer today. First, let's analyze the supposed benefits of an antivirus. One of the expectations of people are that with an antivirus you will be safe and you will not get malware. This is the biggest lie of all. Of course you can get malware with an antivirus. The way an antivirus protects you is when the antivirus maker defines some rules called heuristics that detect the presence of common malware. When these are detected, the files are quarantined or deleted. But let's study what I just said more closely. I refer to common malware, meaning in order for the antivirus to stop anything, the software maker has to discover the virus first, then create the heuristic rules to spot them, then have every single subscriber of the service download the updated rules. The problem is that the biggest threat of all is with zero days. A zero day malware is one that has not been announced publicly and has no solution to it yet. Because it is not public, no antivirus can really respond to a zero day attack. So again, to clarify the definition, a zero day is the term used for an undiscovered attack. Sometimes the consequences of an attack has been seen in a while, but no one knows how the attacker performed the attack. That is a zero day. One of the most well-known zero days is the Pegasus attack. To this day, it is not clear how Pegasus attacks iPhones. Clearly, they know a flaw in the iPhone, but it's a secret that hasn't been revealed. Some recent findings show some flaws in iOS that could have been used by Pegasus, but this is not yet clear. The point to this is that an antivirus is useless when it doesn't know how the attack is done. The real purpose of an antivirus is to prevent the spread of common malware, what I refer to as kitty cracker attacks. These are nowhere as serious and there are other ways of handling this which I will discuss later. The second way an antivirus is supposed to work is by scanning your traffic from email and browser downloads and then using a sandbox to test incoming files in advance to see if weird behaviors show up in the sandbox. Since the antivirus is testing files in a sandbox, in theory it should isolate malware and not affect the normal operation of the computer. 
This has proven to be an incorrect assumption. Cybersecurity people have shown that the sandbox itself has kernel permissions, and thus malware may have an even more dangerous effect. Also, three-letter agencies are aware of many flaws in the sandbox approach and how advanced malware can easily beat this detection techniques. In fact, there's a whole document from the Zucking IA that has been published on WikiLeaks, and that was the main basis of my older antivirus video. It showed that an antivirus actually opens up more vulnerabilities to advanced malware that wouldn't exist if there was no antivirus. You can watch that older video to see all the details of that. But let me return to the function of the antivirus again. It protects you supposedly on several fronts. One, it scans files that are already on your system to see if you've already been infected. Two, it scans your incoming network for mail and downloads and captures attachments and passes that through the sandbox for testing. Three, it scans your network for traffic to see if you're being subjected to known phishing attacks or basically social engineering to trick you into providing private information. This is well and good in theory, but this third item is the entry point to my counter arguments. In my last video, I actually showed how Avast Antivirus installs a fake root certificate on your device. By doing this, all of the HTTPS or TLS-based encryption on your device is effectively canceled. The Avast Antivirus then can see all the traffic in plain text. Some of you may not react to this because you may make the assumption that an antivirus isn't reporting any content to a third party, your government or a foreign government. But this is a very distinct time in our history. As I mentioned in multiple videos, there's been an attempt by many governments to eliminate the secrecy provided by end-to-end -end encryption. For example, one provided by apps like Signal. And the way they decided to handle the end-to-end -end encryption problem is by bypassing the end-to-end -end encryption apps and do what is called client-side scanning instead. Scan the content pre-encryption. Well, the problem is that an antivirus is pretty well equipped to do client-side scanning already. In fact, it is already doing that and in some cases reporting its findings to the antivirus HQ. I already told you that Kaspersky did a scan of files, found some suspicious new files on some devices, and then automatically uploaded those files to Kaspersky headquarters in Russia. An antivirus can scan files on the device, right? Nothing stops the antivirus from reading contents of files and searching for keywords or scanning photos and looking for particular characteristics. This is something that Apple is capable of doing on its devices today, which is why I shun Apple devices. If Kaspersky is able to find files and send it over to HQ, who says the files have to be malware? And this is the crazy part. The user doesn't really know what the antivirus is doing and what it is sending externally from what is in your system. And the scary part is that some antivirus put that root certificate and it can actually break encryption on your device. This enables a man in the middle to see what you're doing even in banking or private conversations and then once again send data externally. Again, the antivirus could report this data to some agency. The incentive to do this comes from government mandates to beat end-to-end -end encryption. And as I discussed in the last video, these changes are very easy to do on an antivirus. It's already a built-in spying machine. So the argument goes that spying is okay as long as it protects me from malware. And of course, from a corporate point of view, corporate systems are already spied on by IT. They don't want any secrets on a corporate network. So the antivirus doesn't hurt a corporation. A corporation does not assign a value to privacy. And I'll move the discussion from here to why I can successfully fend off malware attacks even without an antivirus. If you understand how an attacker tries to penetrate your system, then you will also understand how to evade malware without opening yourself up to other kinds of privacy invasions. Let me tell you about a recent Apple update. I think it was from a year ago and it was called Lockdown Mode. So on an iOS device, Apple does not load an antivirus. Instead, they offer what is called lockdown mode. If you understand lockdown mode, you will see how Apple sees how attacks are made to the system. I'll get to describing this in a moment. But let me first tell you what a hacker tries to do. A hacker infiltrates your system typically by sending files as attachments, attachments to email, attachments to messages, or sometimes there will be URL links that will pull down the image or file. The normal idea is that the file needs to get executed 
somehow like a computer program and then that takes advantage of the system through some known flaw or zero day flaw. The way to execute a program is for the user to click on it. Today this is getting harder and harder to do as all operating systems make sure that you cannot just willy nilly execute a program anywhere. In Linux for example, programs can only be executed after manually granting it ex execute permissions. On Windows and Mac OS, automatic downloads are placed in the downloads folder and you are typically prevented from installing files in system folders. But since the idea of a zero day hack is that there is a flaw that is yet undiscovered by public, then there is the possibility that we don't know the approach of the attacker. However, the approach is always to send some file. So Apple's lockdown mode is simple. It simply blocks attachments on email, iMessage, texting, etc. By blocking attachments, then there is nothing for you to click. But the main takeaway here is this. Why are you clicking on attachments? There lies the secret, folks. The reason I don't have malware is that I don't click on things. I don't download attachments. The only exception is if I'm expecting the attachment and it is from a known source. I don't just download apps I get from the internet, especially free apps, and then run them without making sure they are authentic. Just to give an example, many are familiar with the app Audacity. This allows you to make recordings, edit them, and export them. Audacity is a free app. As a theoretical example, a bad actor could take the actual Audacity program, modify the installer program, and make sure that it installs not only the original program, but a malware with it. This is what could happen if you download files from unknown websites or websites without a verified certificate. Audacity, for example, comes from the website audacityteam.org, and there's a certificate to check. I'd really be concerned if I downloaded it from some suspicious looking website. So here's an example where you may not know you downloaded malware since you will check that Audacity is running fine, so you're not suspicious. And again, this is an example where the antivirus will likely not detect these types of malware. You're always making the assumption that the antivirus maker is on top of its game, but that's not really the reality. I get a lot of phishing emails where someone is always enticing me to click. I got one where I received an invoice supposedly from FedEx or DHL. The idea is that I need to review it. And since I am not sure what it is, I would in theory click on the link to dispute with that supposed vendor. Remember, I don't click on things. If a bank sends me an unsolicited link, I go directly to the bank website to see if that message exists there. I assume that if they send me a link, it is a scam and I look at the email headers to see who really sent it. Typically, it will not have come from a real bank domain. You will need to learn how to view headers in your email. For those of you using Thunderbird, it is called View Source, and it is an option when viewing the email. Now, in spite of this, sometimes you might make a mistake and click on something unintentionally, or you might find that you discovered after the fact that the free app you downloaded introduced scammy products to your device. There are also zero days that are no click attacks. This is another thing that cannot be stopped by an antivirus. Again, it's a zero day so the attack mechanism is unknown to the antivirus maker. And it can happen to anyone. Cross my fingers, I have not had this happen yet. But how do you fix this? Well, the mistake is to assume that an antivirus can clean up the mess. Another thing that is very far from the truth. If you screw up, the only real safe way to ensure that there is no virus or malware is by reinstalling the OS from scratch. I have a video on a product called Clonezilla. You can install your OS fresh. Make a clone copy using Clonezilla. Then on a regular basis or when you detect some unusual behaviors, you restore the clone back and it should bring everything back to original. This is the only way to know if you've eliminated zero days. Otherwise, you're relying on the antivirus to be error-free in detecting even new malware or zero days. All they can detect are old malware circulated by kitty crackers, not even real hackers. These are easily beaten by not clicking on things or attachments. Look how simple my approach is. I don't do much else. Well, I also tend to keep my important files in a separate drive. So when I reinstall my computer, I don't have to touch my second drive and my original data is still there. Since only I move files to the second drive, 
Chances are I will not move malware over since it has to be done intentionally. Malware is installed in hidden areas and you are tricked to put it in common places on your main drive. One other thing I need to mention, many zero-day attacks are based on running malware in memory, not even using a file. These are the most dangerous attacks and an antivirus will not be able to detect them. The hacker tool to do this attack is called Metasploit and part of this framework uses this payload called Meterpreter. This then once loaded in memory on your device will run in the background and be controlled by an external party. It doesn't have any files. Will an antivirus prevent this? Hell no. So what does an antivirus actually do? That's good. It's pretty much useless against anything but kitty cracker stuff. Waste of money. By the way, if you're using Linux or Mac OS, it's difficult for malware to run on your device if the attack is from a file. The reason, as I explained earlier, comes from the fact that execute permissions are denied by default. Windows in recent years have come up with solutions like prevent files with extensions that can be executed like exe or com from being downloaded with these names. So nowadays, this is not so easy to do unless there's some zero day. And as I said repeatedly, an antivirus is useless against a zero day. In summary, do you need an antivirus? Hell no. I will not introduce the risk of a man in the middle and I will not gain anything that I couldn't do for myself by just being careful of downloads and attachments. And what's the point if the most serious attacks cannot be fended off? Save your money. Friends, I started a company to create products that protect your privacy. One of the most important privacy threats is the phone. So we have phones with an open source OS that have no links to big tech. These are called the Google phones and we have various models in our store. The most obvious benefit is that they have no Google ID and are thus invisible to Google. Plus they work like normal phones and they're relatively inexpensive. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which does not log you or block emails. It has no traffic limits. It doesn't scream that you're on a VPN. We don't put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. We give you seven domains and unlimited aliases so you can partition your activities. We also offer webmail access from a browser. All these products are on the store on my app, BraxMay. Sign up on there. You will not be asked to give any personal information to sign up, like email. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.